Welcome back guys, there's a lot of news to cover. A lot's happened in just one week. We've learned that everyone's iPhone in their pocket right now is vulnerable to attack, to being probed by police if they were to take your phone away from you. There's a lot of 2020 iPhone news that we're hearing about, 2019 iPhone stuff. So in one week, a lot has changed. Let's get into it. Now I wanted to start with iOS 13 developer beta 2. This did release today. And so far what I can tell you from just using it is it is more stable. Things are more refined, lags and crashes are not happening as much in just the few hours that I've been using it. Third-party apps seem to run a little bit better. And the great news is, is it's available with a developer profile now. You can actually install it if you go to the developer page, if, if you're a developer. Otherwise, other people are now able to install it without a computer, so that's great news. I'll be making a full video on that tomorrow, guys. I'm so sorry, for medical reasons, I was unable to keep posting in this time, and trust me, I know. Anyways, moving on to the 2020 iPhones. So we've got a brand new report from Ming Chi Ko, who's detailing the sizes and functionality of next year's iPhones, the ones that are actually going to be exciting. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about regarding this year's iPhones too, in not a very great way. So from what we know about the 2020 iPhones, they seem to be harboring all of the main changes coming to the iPhone and hopefully the squared off design like the iPad Pro. Now corroborating Digitimes report from earlier, Ming Chi Ko is also confirming new sizing is happening in 2020. We'll be seeing a 5.4 inch base model, well not base, but the smallest model with an organic LED display, then a 6.1 inch, and then a 6.7 inch. This is confirming Digitimes report from earlier, and yes, it's a huge iPhone, and the smallest iPhone is getting smaller. This could be kind of Apple's compromise between an iPhone SE and the iPhone 10 that exists right now, well, the sizing of it. 0.4 inches doesn't seem like a big deal, but it honestly will be a much smaller phone, so the iPhone SE could live on just in a completely different form. He's also confirming that 5G will be happening in 2020, and it will be arriving first on the iPhone 5.4 inch and the 6. 7 inch. So the iPhone 11R replacement, the 12R, man, this naming, I'm, I'm really excited to see what they're going to say about this year's iPhone. The 12R will not have 5G out of the gate. Again, Apple wants to stagger the cheaper device and make it more lucrative to buy the high-end models. He confirms that Qualcomm will be supplying the 5G modems and that Apple will likely be releasing their own in-house 5G modem in 2022 or 2023. So that's two years sooner than we heard earlier. A different analyst said 2025. Now I can't help but feel that most of you will agree with this. So an analyst from a Japanese investment bank is saying the iPhone 11 will be a yawner. It'll be a snooze fest. The device is so undifferent from the iPhone XS just by looks alone that most people will not be enticed to buy it. Now he names several things that people are looking at right now on the iPhone scale and how this is not taking any of those boxes. For one, the notch is remaining. The camera is, it's the only noticeable thing that he basically says would entice people to upgrade. Otherwise, the design is staying. The sizing is remaining. The screen resolution is likely staying. The only difference on the screen would be that the bezel could shrink just a little bit. So people do not have a good enough reason to buy the 2019 iPhones, whatever they'll be called. And it's absolutely true. Through the months of rumors that I've been putting you guys through, there really hasn't been this big, hey, you need to buy this feature, aside from the cameras. The cameras are getting very refined, very big, and that alone will probably sway a lot of people over, but it's just not much. For people that already have most of those features offered, the seven nanometer A13 chip just won't be enough. Apple needs to start innovating more, and they're reserving everything for the 2020 iPhones. Why are they doing this stopgap? I mean, why? Is it for profits alone? Do they not know that people need more and more every year to upgrade, or is innovation just getting harder and harder. Regarding the cameras, this analyst is saying 12 megapixels is here to stay. There will not be any 3D sensing cameras. So everything that we've already heard, we've heard a 16 megapixel number for Max Weinbach, but so far we're not seeing any evidence to support that. Also, 3D touch is being removed on a hardware level. So with iOS 13, Apple neutered 3D touch, it's not the same. And this is just one step before actually removing it physically from the iPhone. And a Korean website, The Alec, is confirming the actual milliamp battery capacity capacity of the iPhone LR, and they're putting it just at 3,110. That's 5.7% higher than that of the iPhone XR, which is a very insignificant bump up from 2942 milliamps, but still 5% is 5%. Regarding the battery capacity on the other iPhones, earlier Ming Chi Ko did say that the iPhone 11 would see a 20 to 25% increase and the iPhone 11 Max 
expects a 10 to 15% increase. So this will be the biggest battery ever in every iPhone in this current lineup. And a point I'd like to make that's just been on my mind for a while here, looking at iOS 13, using it for the past two weeks, it really brings the point home that Apple is trying to perfect their craft. They're trying to perfect the iPhone. They're definitely perfecting the software. And at one point they'll blend perfectly. So my idea is we'll have an iPhone completely without any notches. You'll have the perfect battery life inside enough for at least one day entirely, just no compromises, hopefully more than that. But we're being limited right now by the battery technology. Once that improves, then we're gonna be seeing the iPhones of the future. And I really can't wait until that day. And here's a very, very scary thought. The company Celebrite, which specializes in cracking phones for law enforcement, is now capable of cracking any iPhone up to iOS 12.3. 12.3.1, 12.3.2 are pretty much the same firmware, so I assume they fall into that as well. And that's, that's terrifying because it means if you were to be arrested right now with this tool, no matter what passcode you have on your phone, well, there actually is a way to protect against, I'll tell you in a minute here, they would be able to go inside the phone and unlock it and get your information. And that's terrifying. Now, this was previously possible also from a different company, Gray, but that was patched through some means where they restricted the lightning port. Now it's unknown if Apple can patch this. They'd actually have to buy a machine, which by the way, are still available online. People are selling their old ones on eBay. This is not supposed to happen. The company specifies that they want the machines destroyed once they're no longer needed, yet you can go online and buy one and sometimes it even has old information in it. This is just a nightmare for Apple all around. Now for you, my suggestion is don't use a numeric passcode. Use an actual alphanumeric passcode, just maybe just with letters make it difficult for them. When it's not just numbers, it's exponentially harder for a machine like this to do what it does. Again, we don't know how this new one works. It may use some new strategies, but the point is, yeah, make it harder for them. And I just wanna say Apple did it first. Pixel actually leaked before officially revealing their Google Pixel 4, and this is a few months early, and lo and behold, there's a lens very similar to Apple's. It's a square orientation for a triple lens camera. I think we'll start to see a shift in the design language on many Android phones copying that of Apple's. And oh boy, let me tell you, as someone that works with the leaks and stuff, just to see how much people hate the iPhone 11 design and then on Google's side, I, I'm seeing some comments about, oh, that doesn't look so bad, that's all right. So, hmm, <laughs> anyways, we're gonna start to see that lens pop up in more areas than just the Pixel. A lot of phones could potentially start copying it. And it's very interesting to me that Huawei still intends to release their Fold X, despite all of their issues being choked out by the software, could they make it work? So they delayed it until September, citing reasons such as, we don't want this to be embarrassing for the company, in, in a nutshell. And I, I'm really curious to see how their Oak OS does. Will they be able to eventually replace Android? It's an exciting prospect. It would still basically run off of Android in one form or another, but be their own take on it. So let's see what happens there. And indeed, looks like the leak was true. Apple is allowing iOS 13 to read NFC tags in passports in Germany, in identification cards so you'll actually be able to use your iPhone as a verifiable form of identity and the fact that iOS 13 is jailbreakable kind of does make this a concern could you easily fraud who you are through some means of hacks we'll see how this blows over but iOS 13 is jailbroken the passport rumor was completely true and iOS 13 on the iPhone 6 someone said they got it running turned out to be completely untrue but the idea of it gave me some hope, would have been cool. Like a project such as White Door where you'd run newer firmwares on way, way old iPhones. Moving on, we got new MacBooks on the way. Apple has registered seven models with the Eurasian Economic Committee. And this is basically the pre-review before release. We can expect some new MacBooks. What could these be? Probably the base, just MacBook. The new MacBook Air could potentially see a refresh as well, although that was just refreshed in October and we could be seeing that 16 inch MacBook Pro. We've just seen a refresh on the current one, so that seems unlikely, but there are new ones coming out here relatively soon. And regarding pricing on the new Mac Pro, The Verge initially estimated a $35,000 bill if you were to tick all the boxes. Now, 9 to 5 Mac published an updated and well-informed breakdown of the pricing. Well, this was earlier, just got to it. Uh, and they're saying it would come closer to $50,000 for that computer. Now, if you look at it from a professional standpoint, many companies don't bat an eye buying systems worth hundreds of thousands of dollars as long as it helps them make 
millions. For what you're getting, it's certainly a lot. Like you're getting your money's worth at this given time. Yes, a competitor may come out making it obsolete or less, less worth your money in just a year here. But at the given time, $50,000 sounds insane for this Mac Pro, but could be a good deal to someone. And by the way, the new Spotify interface is really awesome. I love the swipe feature, just swiping between. It's a much cleaner, more accessible way to get to your music and your playlists. Apple take note. Even though the music application is great in iOS 13 and oh boy, I still have to get to all those features. But overall, there it is, latest update on Apple. Stay tuned for more.